We should not be feeling bad for Ryan Day. He's such a talented coach. He's always going to have a great job somewhere, whether it be in a 15-year stint at Ohio State or going to the uh -oh. NFL or whatever. What's that, Steve? I'm getting ready to say uh-oh because I have a feeling you want to ask us, uh, does this lead him to – no, look, I'm just going to make a statement. Look, uh, you, look, you at, look at the, the Bengals way. job or the uh, Browns it's job. Or in line with what Tony was talking about, and, and this is a judgment call, but I agree with Tony that this is the best football team in the country. And, man, he just missed out on a playoff chance, and we could go on and on and debate the referees and all that business. But it was an extremely tight, close game, and even if all the officials made the right calls, it still came down to a – a miscommunication on a pass in the end zone at the end of the game. You know, it's an excruciating loss, but he's a young coach. He's talented. He's got everything in front of him. But if this would turn out to be the worst possible scenario for the Big Ten and for Ohio State, and it's difficult for him to maintain what we just all kind of assume is elite status, but it can't be assumed. Maybe Ohio State is the Ohio State of the 80s suddenly. And this is a missed opportunity, and that catapults them into something different, um, catapults them into the current Wisconsin-Iowa level or something like that. Um, I, I don't know, just a consideration. Our, our thoughts and feelings should go out more to the players that don't have an NFL future that are deprived of senior season, certainly. But just from a historical standpoint of what could have been, and again, he's such a young guy with his future in front of me, front of him, I believe, uh, that it should be um, not an issue, but it just, just crossed my mind. I think they're in good hands with him because he is pretty grounded, and players and parents do really like him, and he comes across as genuine to all of them. So I think that will continue to play regardless down the road, and as long as he is at Ohio State, he will have something to sell, and – he is uh, just the way he comes across to the people that he is dealing with. It's, he's a genuine guy. So uh, you see a lot of players complaining about their coaches right now who, who they feel they're, they're being lied to. And even Urban Meyer said, if players are coming out about your program, he said this like last week, that tells you that they don't trust the coaches. Like if they're going to the media about how they're being treated or what they're not being tested for, that they don't trust the coaches. All we have gotten from Ohio State's players and their parents is how much they trust these coaches. And that's not just because of a title on a door or a label or anything like that. That's because of the people. And Ryan Day will remain that person no matter how angry he gets at the Big Ten for throwing the best team in the nation under the bus. And, you know, I'll just leave it at that. Last point. <laughs> 250 to 60 players get drafted in the NFL draft every year. There's legitimately four to 500 players that have legitimate hopes of being drafted. So we're talking about four to 500 players in that range or maybe more prepare for the NFL draft under normal circumstances. How do we play a college football season in which we squeeze this season in and then allow for those players to move on? And I'm not talking about the Justin Fields of the world that just say, I'm not playing. I'm preparing for the NFL draft, and I'm a top five selection. Talking about those guys that you mentioned, and Jonathan Cooper, do I do I need to put something else on tape? And if I do, does it become too late in the season that I I play five games and then I say, "See ya"? I got to get ready for the combine. It could be a mess. Yeah, it could get messy uh, for sure. I think one of the benefits of a of a spring winter season is you get the freshman. Uh, in the depth, uh, some seasoning, obviously, uh, before the real bullets would fly in the fall, I guess. Um, Ohio State's, you know, I, I mentioned Cooper, but there's probably, you know, a handful of guys there. Munford, who was kind of banged up and played the last year or two, he maybe need to show some things at the tackle before he jumps off uh, into the draft or whatever. So maybe he would play. Um, I don't know. There, You know, um, Ohio State – has got a um, uh, young secondary that, that could use the seasoning, young wide receivers. So there are benefits to it. Uh, even if you're left with holes in your roster, the recruiting that they have done, they are deep at every position on the football field. Uh, maybe the one area where they probably still need help is at linebacker, just because they have 
seven or eight scholarship linebackers who are juniors or seniors right now, and there'll be a tremendous vacuum uh, in the next year or two at that position. But um, otherwise, they have the bodies across the board to withstand if the scenario you bring up a player plays half of the winter season and says, okay, I got to go off and train now for the combine or whatever. Hey, it's a free country. It's a free world. You know, um, I just, I, I think viewership would be okay in the, in the winter and spring. Um, college basketball is just never in at least the last 10 or 15 years has kind of, you know, if it's not the NCAA tournament, there just isn't a lot of interest in it, it seems like. And you would know better than I what the ratings are on ESPN, but it seems to me like a lot of those games get like a one rating on ESPN or something, which, you know, you could put a fishing show on and, and it would do a one rating probably. So, um, you know, it, it, the value of – I mean, unless it's a high-powered college basketball game, you know, I just don't – see that there's a lot of interest in college as much interest as there should be perhaps in college basketball. So I don't think you're hurting college basketball to play college football uh, too much in the, in the winter and spring. Um, it's just who's going to take those games seriously. That's that, that's, I don't know. I mean, we have to, cause we cover Ohio state, but, is the national media going to consider consider those? I mean, particularly if these other three leagues play their season, crown a national champion, and it all goes off without a hitch, they're just going to pat the Big Ten and the Pac-12 on the head and say, oh, you're having your nice little winter exhibition season. Too bad you couldn't have played last fall is kind of how I view it. And um, I don't know. I'm, I'm – I think it cuts both ways. It could help prepare people for the fall, but then you could also suffer those wear and tear stress injuries that take you out of winning a championship in the fall too. And all, every single one of those guys, Steve, writing about, you know, patting the, the big 10 on the head, they will be at the Ohio state Michigan game. They would be at the Rose bowl covering it. So I think yeah. that also tells you that it is still important. And the, the lack of, well, there's no national title is kind of, that's just our, that's just our thinking of college football in general now, where um, if teams aren't competing for the national title, then it's, it's you know, who you know who, who really cares. As to w one group who would like to see it, the NFL. They want to see as much film on these guys as possible. Scouts are going to get tired of looking at last year's film. Drafting somebody in May or June of 2021 who hasn't played since 2019, that's not how you get – that's not how you get accurate results. And so they're going to – they'll – They'll lay out a plan. Uh, they'll be, as we saw Albert Breer, right? They will push the the draft back, push the combine back, whatever it takes, I think, to make sure they're not wasting investments, not wasting millions of dollars. All of these programs in the, high, in the Big Ten and Pac-12 have millions of dollars riding on this. So does every single NFL team so that they're not drafting the wrong guy. So I think they would want to see as much film as possible, and they – you, we could even see some NFL Network airing, you know, football games in, in, in the winter as well. Before I let you guys go, uh, DeAndre, thank you so much for the contribution as always. And I shouldn't do this because some people are going to criticize me for being a homer. Uh, but I'm going to take the bait here real quick and I'm going to address 4-0. Yes, you have every, every conceivable right to pound your chest for 4-0. But let's understand, this is not the Steelers and the Browns playing twice a year where over a five-to-eight-year year, eight year span, the same 20 to 40 players are on a 53-man roster. These were four isolated teams, different teams playing in four isolated years. So this didn't happen like over and over with the same teams playing. So all I'm going to say, and believe me, if anyone watches me on a regular basis knows that I would be making the same point if this was USC and Stanford. Has nothing to do with Ohio State. The two of those years had injured Buckeye quarterbacks playing. I'm just going to say that. You know. There you go. It uh, hopefully will catapult into a number of matchups uh, that are meaningful in the future between the two schools because it will be fascinating to see them back on the field. 
You guys are amazing. Uh, I want to say real quick, uh, in addition to BGPO Football Funk, uh, Razzmatazz, and David Knight, thank you so much for an amazing contribution and also encouraging others to contribute. Um, any way you can do it, like, subscribe, follow these guys at their respective sites, Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye Scoop, Steve Hellwagon, Buck Nuts on 247 Sports. These guys are amazing and the very best when it comes to Ohio State football coverage. Guys, thanks for hanging out a little bit extra today. Thank you so much for all that you do. We will yep. see everybody Thank next time. Take care.